Liverpool Football Club unintentionally get over £30 million off the asking price of Luis Diaz. We say unintentionally, but this is Tottenham. Tottenham Football Club, they pursued, they chased, they almost got the deal done for Luis Diaz. A, a massive £30 million plus pounds less than Liverpool were being told they had to pay in the summer of 2022. Spurs did all the hard work negotiating the price down. They almost swooped in and took him away from Liverpool, but they couldn't get the deal over the line. How embarrassing do you think this is for Tottenham Hotspur? And how frustrated do you think Antonio Conte is going to be with the owners and the management at Tottenham? Could this be the beginning? I'm not going to say of the end, but is this the beginning of showing Antonio Conte that Daniel Levy and Tottenham are just not Serious. I know that Tottenham Hotspur get called Spursy, the history of the Tottenham. All these types of names, Bottle Job FC, are thrown at Spurs on a very regular basis. Choking in league title races, failing in so many semis and finals over recent years. They lost Jose Mourinho, they got rid of Jose Mourinho, and then they went through 12, 13, 14 managerial interview and job offers before ending up settling on Nuno Espirito Santo, who started life at Tottenham very, very well. However, the world came crumbling down and crashing very, very quickly. The performances were bad. You could clearly see the players had not bought into his philosophy. The fans didn't want him. And why would anybody have wanted him when he was 13th, 14th, 15th on the list? Why would anybody have wanted him? There is no logical reason for anybody at any point to have wanted him. So, of course, it failed. Then, what did Spurs go and do? They went back after and got Antonio Conte that was a, 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 a matter of hours away from joining in the summer. A world-class, potent, brilliant, amazing manager. That cannot be denied. No matter what you think of Tottenham, Antonio Conte's pedigree is real especially domestically. In leagues, he's absolutely out of this world. When he signed, he was promised the, the grand stand. We're going to sign big players. We're going to keep Harry Kane. We're going to go big in January for you. The reason he walked away in the summer, Antonio Conte, at the 11th hour. In fact, the 11th hour, it was 11, 11.59 he walked away, was because he said that Spurs didn't match his ambition. And in January, they dilly-dallied and delayed. They lost Adama Traore to Barca at the 11th hour again. And the Luis Diaz deal, not only did Antonio Conte miss out on one of his main targets, it was a deal that had been worked on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Spurs actually did a very good job. If you read the article in The Athletic, they did a very good job at lowering the price down. Lowering it down by over 30 million pounds. There was a release clause said to be around 66 million. They were talking about a deal of around about 35. There was a 4 million differential. Spurs were there. Luis Diaz always had a desire to play for Liverpool. But Spurs were showing want. Spurs were showing attention. And this is massive to a football player. It is huge to a football player. It is, in some regards, it can be more important than who the club coming in from is. Do they want me? Do they desire me? Where am I going to be in this team? Who's the manager? What status will this give me at the club? First team regular at Tottenham. Kane, Son, Diaz. 
Liverpool's a great club, a much bigger club than Tottenham. But he's, he's behind the pecking order. He's got to work his way into the team. And Liverpool weren't in for him at that point. But the embarrassment today that Tottenham fans and Liverpool and, and, and Antonio Conte must be feeling is massive. Is Antonio Conte regretting his decision to go to Tottenham already? The Athletic have stated that it was at this point where Liverpool pounced. They let Spurs do all the graft, all the hard work, all the whining and the dining and the flowers and the chocolates and the teddy bears, the date nights, the drinks, the cocktails, the late night text messages, the early morning wake up calls, dropping the parents off to the airport. And it was Liverpool that swooped in. And they stole the show at the 11th hour. The alpha male stepped into the room. Step aside, puny little Tottenham. The big boys are here. This ain't Antonio Conte. This is not how he behaves. It shows Liverpool are in brilliant hands now that Michael Edwards is leaving. You know, I think he's uh, Julian Ward. Waited patiently, diligently, quietly, silently. tippy toed around. Saved themselves £30 million. Embarrassed a rival. And it has, in my opinion, put a little bit of a spanner in the works. It has, in my opinion... And it will already start to make Antonio Conte think, did I make the right choice? Did I go to the right football club? Should I really, really be here? Was it sensible? Benton Kerr, man like Dejan up front. These two signings, I'm not going to slag them off overtly. They're not names that were being touted by Tottenham fans, or in fact, many, very many Premier League fans at all up until this window. They feel a little rushed. They feel a little bit panicky. They don't appear to be the main targets Tottenham were linked with all month. You know me, I don't buy into this media narrative. Where you're linked by major outlets from the middle of December until the last few days of the window, and then after the fact, all the, all, all the tier one Tottenham journalists are saying, no, we, 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 we were never really in for Adama to your right. Luis Diaz was, it was a pipe dream, maybe. We got the players right near the top of the list. Oh, shit. No one believes that. Tottenham fans, might, some Tottenham fans might tweet it. They might share it and go, yeah, yeah. That's a good story. But that's all it is. Just like Lord of the Rings. Just like The Sopranos. Just like Game of Thrones. It is a tale. It is fiction. It is made up. It is not real. And the sobering fact should be, maybe when you're laying there at night, Spurs fans I'm speaking to, your manager knows the truth. Spurs need a gargantuan, a huge summer. Quality from the back to the front of this team. They need to spend big. And they need to start or they need to stop the penny pinching. They need to stop the, we'll leave it until this, or well, the final weeks. We'll try and drive three, four million pound on both deals for Adama Traore and Luis Diaz. If Spurs pay the money one day earlier on both deal, they sign the players. Slam, dunk, the funk. Over and out, finished, done and dusted. Wipe your mouths and move on. But they've strengthened Barcelona, which at the moment isn't an issue for Spurs. They're not in Europe. They've strengthened Liverpool. And I think they've damaged Antonio Conte ever so slightly. We already saw a few signs of this with team performances in December what, and January. What more may happen? From Liverpool's standpoint, as we say, excellent business. And with Michael Edwards leaving, there was always going to be this element of fear that maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, things may fall apart. Don't count on it. The accumulation of Fabio Carvalho, 
one of the brightest young prospects coming out of one of the best academies in the country. Luis Diaz coming in. Canate still learning his trade. Jota really finding his feet. And with the promise of more money, the likes of Jude Bellingham right at the top of the priority list. Liverpool are rebuilding their next title-winning team with Jurgen Klopp at the helm, still full of an array of world-class talents. But they got the business done. They leave Tottenham Hotspur completely and utterly red-faced and somewhat embarrassed. What's the response of Tottenham going to be for the remainder of the season? What will they do come the summer? Will they act faster? Will they pay the money? Will they back Antonio Conte? Because we all know what happens when you don't back Antonio Conte. He walks away. He is the best manager on paper. In fact, no, wait, this is a fact. He's the best manager Tottenham have had since Bill Nicholson. The very best. Find me a better manager they've had at the peak of their powers. And I'll eat my hat. Not that I'm not wearing one, but I'll find one and I'll eat it live on the air. You won't be able to do it. Who's clear? You won't do it. Until next time, smash the like button, leave me your comments, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you.